आवाज आ रहा है कौन है ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो टुडे वी आर रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो टेन द समम बोनम चैप्टर सिक्सटी सिक्स पौंड्रक द फॉल्स वासुदेव वर्स नंबर वन टेन पॉइंट सिक्सटी सिक्स पॉइंट वन श्री शुकवाच नंद व्रज गते रामे करुषा अधिपतिर्नृप वासुदेव अहम अज्ञो दूत कृष्णा प्राहिनो श्री सुख उवाच नंद व्रज गते रामे करुषा अधिपतिर्नृप वासुदेव अहम अज्ञो दूत कृष्णा प्राहिनो श्री सुख उवाच नंद व्रज गते रामे करुषा अधिपतिर्नृप वासुदेव अहम अज्ञो दूत कृष्णा प्राहिनो श्री शुक उवाच नंद व्रज गते रामे करुषाधिपतिर्नृपा वासुदेव अमृति यज्ञो दूत कृष्णा प्राहिनो श्री शुक उवाच नंद व्रज गते रामे परुषा अधिपति नृप वासुदेव अमित यज्ञो दूत कृष्णा प्राहिनो श्री शुक उवाच नंद व्रज गते रामे करुषाधिपतिर्नृप वासुदेव अमिति यज्ञो दूत कृष्णा प्राहिनो माताजी सुख उवाच नंद व्रज गते रामे करुषाधिपतिर्नृप वासुदेव अमृति यज्ञो दूत कृष्णा प्राहिनो वर्ड टू वर्ड मीनिंग श्री सुख उवाच सुखदेव गोस्वामी सेठ 
नंद ऑफ नंद महाराज व्रजम टू द कावर्ड विलेज गते हैविंग गॉन रामे लॉर्ड बलराम करुषा अधिपति द रूलर ऑफ करुषा पौंड्रक नृप ओ किंग परीक्षित वासुदेव द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड वासुदेव अहम आय इति दस थिंकिंग अज्ञ फुलिश दूतम अ मैसेंजर कृष्णाय टू लॉर्ड कृष्ण प्राहिनोद सेंट ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपोर्ट बाय द डिसाइपल्स ऑफ श्रील प्रभुपाद ट्रांसलेशन सुखदेव गोस्वामी सेड ओ किंग वाई लॉर्ड बलराम वॉज अवे विजिटिंग नंदाज विलेज ऑफ ब्रज द रूलर ऑफ करूश फुलिशली थिंकिंग आई एम द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड वासुदेव sent a messenger to lord krishna purport since lord ram had gone to nand vraja pandra foolishly thought that lord krishna would be alone and therefore easy to challenge thus he dared to send his crazy message to the lord ओम अज्ञातिर ज्ञानाजनशलाकय चक्षु उन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम नमा ओम विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नामस्ते सारस्वती देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्णा चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा सो वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग द नेक्टर ऑफ कृष्णा फास्ट टाइम्स ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ जन्माष्टमी सो वंस लॉर्ड बलराम ही वेंट टू वृंदावन यात्रा फ्रॉम द्वारका and he stayed there for around 2 months and lord krishna is present in dwaraka so the king of karusha poundrak he sent a messenger to dwaraka to lord krishna poundrak started thinking that i am god bhagwan supreme personality of godhead i am the real vasudev and this person present in dwaraka is fake vasudev Pondrak started thinking like that. 
each of the conditioned living entity has this ishwar bhav ishwar bhav that i am the controller i am the enjoyer i am the proprietor i am the master in competition to krishna so some of them they actually think big because of flattery of their followers pondrak was one such the followers of pondrak they will flatter him and they will repeatedly glorify him as bhagwan as supreme personality of godhead so much so that it went into his head just like sometimes children play uh, the game of being one being the king and other being the subjects or one being the police other being the thief so there's a childish play but the child who is acting as the king after 2 3 hours if that goes into his head even after the game is over he will think i am the king and walk and talk like that that's illusion so pondrak was surrounded by followers who would flatter him falsely glorify him falsely praise him and he really started thinking that i am god i am vasudev actually i am not god but this hundreds of people cannot be wrong so maybe i am god that is the start of illusion that i can be wrong he can be wrong but hundred cannot be wrong so if they say i am god then i must be god so that generates pride that generates false ego false ego means false identity and that is not good as practicing devotees we should be careful not to surround ourselves with such flatterers with such dishonest friends who would only flatter us praise us glorify us instead of speaking honestly about our faults so then we will never get corrected and that praise will go in our head and we will think i am perfect i am great i am a pure devotee and everybody else is less than me we had a brahmachari in our ashram who is shifted to some other temple now very sincere brahmachari every day nice mangal aarti chanting 16 rounds in the temple hall very nice behavior and etiquette and service attitude so everybody would call him pure devotee pure devotee aa gaya happens we used to stay in one room 63 that was called pure devotee room so one day he was filling water on the sixth floor so two three brahmacharis also came to fill water so one brahmachari said look pure devotee is filling water today so this brahmachari very humbly said prabhu please don't call me pure devotee again and again I said why what happened he said i will start thinking i am a pure devotee but this is serious if i am surrounded by flatterers 
they will glorify my faults and my weakness as if i am great and my faults are uh, my past times leela then i will never get corrected so not only we should have juniors around us we should also have equals around us and we should also have seniors around us so seniors will correct us equals will laugh with us and we will be accountable if i do a mistake and there is nobody to correct me then what will happen i'll do the mistake again next day because i didn't get corrected again next day i don't get corrected i do the same mistake third day fourth day fifth day and in few months it will become my habit and in few years it will become a hard habit and it's very difficult to overcome that mistake then there will be a big problem if i don't get corrected i will die with the mistake without becoming perfect and i'll take one more birth to become perfect so this life chance to go back home to krishna is gone so if i continue doing mistake without getting corrected the big problem will be i'll be a senior devotee and senior is generally around with juniors and juniors don't correct seniors that's not good etiquette so then who will correct me we will need a super senior which is rare so better to get corrected in early stages of our sadhana at final stages of sadhana we will not get corrected we want to become advanced and perfect devotees not just senior devotees in iskon or in any society even in family or organization it's easy to become senior devotee should i tell you the formula just be alive just keep breathing breathe oxygen give out carbon dioxide after few years of this phenomena you will become a senior member of the society senior member of your family or building or organization but that's not the goal of life that's not what did we contribute to our age that's not a qualification when we do tapasya and sadhana that adds to the age of seniority then we are advanced increasing our dependence on krishna so flattery artificial praises and glorification in the name of encouragement and appreciation is not welcome it doesn't help it only boost our ego and that's what happened with poundrak he started thinking all these people are correct i am god i am controller i am creator i am enjoyer i am master and he started behaving in that way i am vasudev but he had only two hands so he got two cardboard hands and stuck on his shoulders and he started wearing yellow dhoti and started wearing uh, imitation kaustubh mani and vajanti mala 
he started wearing like dwarkadish all the garments and ornaments like a theoretical actor who will dress up like krishna on the stage and he had duplicate shankha chakra gada padma but he didn't realize it if he had even one good friend he would have told him founder you foolish person just look at the shankha chakra gada padma they are not original see it is written they are made in china it's not from goloka throw it but this pondra challenged dwarkadi she said if i am god how can be one more god so he sent a message he sent a brahmana and brahmanas are free enter in dwarka and dwarka's palace so brahmana went to the assembly of ugrasen where krishna is present with his devotees balram is absent balram is in nand maharaj gokul vrindavan pandrak thought this good opportunity balram very uh, gets angry very fast he is not there it will be easy to handle the situation so the messenger came and gave the message to krishna from behalf of his master poundrak that dwarka this krishna i am real vasudev you are imitating vasudev you are cheating the people i have taken incarnation to protect the pious people and annihilate the miscreants but you are posing as vasudev and i hereby appeal to you to stop posing as vasudev to surrender your weapon sudarshan chakra and take shelter of my lotus feet if you don't do that then i will have to fight with you see the audacity there are people today who think they are god and they behave that way but there is only one god one supreme personality of godhead krishna nobody else shri prabhupa said our preaching should include these two principles first that we should preach krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and second there is nobody else who is supreme personality of god head not just first part second part as well that krishna is supreme personality of god head and nobody else is supreme personality of god head there are demi gods brahma shiva indra chandra varun vayu surya agni ganesh durga but only krishna is bhagwan ishwara parama krishna sachidanand vigrah anadir adir govind sarva karana karanam that's dharma so this pondrak he thought that way that this dwarkadesh is my competitor false person so what happened in dwarka when the letter was read everybody had a good laugh joke of the day joke of the year joke of the decade joke of the kalpa Ugrasen laughed, Krishna laughed, Satyaki laughed, Kritavarma laughed, Akrura laughed. All the Dwarka Vasis and the who heard they laughed. Said, "Wow, what a joke! What a joke! First prize, first prize." 
award, give award to this joke. Uh, if you visit Dwarka those days and go to the assembly of Dwarka days, what will be the scene, a general average day? The scene will be all the people in the assembly are laughing. Why? Because Krishna just now told a joke. And after that Krishna tells the second joke then all laugh, then third joke, then all laugh. So morning till evening, that's what happened in Dwarka, then Krishna goes back to his palace, because there's nothing to do. Everything is fine. What is the duty of a king to protect the citizens, to extract taxes, to give justice, to solve problems? Dwarka, there are no problems, no justice, no criminals, no complaints. So what to do? Nobody wants to sit at home with wife, so they come to the assembly, so Krishna tells joke, they laugh, then they tell joke, then they laugh, then they tell joke, then they laugh. Then sometimes says Krishna, twenty-one, so they remember, twenty-one joke, so they laugh again. So that's Dwarka, that's Krishna Loka, Kevala Ananda Kandam, simply joyful, that is Bhakti. When we are engaged in Krishna's service, we are happy and joyful. When we have material desires and attachments and ambitions, then we are not joyful. We are unhappy because something is incomplete. We need to fulfill that. But serving Krishna, we are joyful. So everybody had a good laugh. Then Krishna responded to the messenger, said, go and tell your master that you are a fool, fool number one, rascal, badmash. You claim to be Bhagawan and you want my Sudarshan Chakra, I am coming and handing it over to you. Let me see if you can handle it. You want me to take your shelter? But after I kill you with my Sudarshan Chakra, your body will be shelter of dogs. In Mumbai Bhasha, he told him, Teko kutte ki maut marunga. So the messenger went to Poundrak and relayed the message. Poundrak got very angry. At that time he was staying in Kashi with his friend, the king of Kashi, Kashi Raja. And he got ready his army, Krishna got ready his army. Krishna was very eager to visit and see Poundrak. A, to kill him. B, to actually see him because Krishna heard from many people the way Poundrak dresses is exactly like you. If today you get a news that there is a visitor who is exactly like you dressing and looking, would you not be interested to see that person? Yes. So Krishna got interested to see. And second, Krishna actually decided to kill Poundrak. Krishna's visit here as an incarnation is to establish dharma. And that includes not just protecting devotees and killing asuras, killing people who are followers and propagators of a dharma and propagating a philosophy, claiming somebody who is not God to be God is biggest a dharma, is cheating, it's like fraud, selling copper as gold. Selling duplicate items in the market is fraud. There is a real product who has de which has demand in the market and you make a duplicate product and sell it as if it is real product. That is very big fraud in the society. So claiming somebody to be God, claiming somebody 
to be a bona fide spiritual master or a pure devotee or a sadhu representative of Krishna, but actually not qualified, that's a very big fraud. Adharma, pretender, hypocrite, mithyachari, false behavior, dishonesty, and Krishna doesn't tolerate that. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't tolerate that. We have example of Junior Haridas, who is in Sanyas Ashram, who came in contact with the elderly Mataji to beg rice to be offered to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said it's not good for a Sanyasi or even a Brahmachari to have a transactional dealing with Mataji. So he banished Haridas, told him, I don't want to see your face. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is patita pavan, he is ready to uh, liberate and give relief to any sinful tendencies and activities to fallen conditioned souls. So he is patita pavan, but he is not mithyachari pavan. He is not ready to forgive those who are false behavior. Those who in the name of renunciation try to come in contact with sense objects or money or woman or prestige, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu doesn't give his mercy. Honest thief is acceptable by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But dishonest, Gentleman is not accepted. Speaking lies, being dishonest is very big uh, obstruction for our bhakti lata growth, growth of bhakti lata, creeper of devotional service, duplicity, kuti nati. Duplicity means inside is not equal to outside. Inside I appear to be, sorry, outside I appear to be your well-wisher. But inside I want to exploit you or gain something from you or harm you. That's duplicity. Inside not equal to outside. Such a behavior is not acceptable by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Such a behavior is disgusting to the Lord. So Krishna wanted to kill him because he is propagating false knowledge, false philosophy and cheating the conditioned souls, promoting somebody who is not God as God. That's not proper. So Krishna with his small army came to the border of Kashi, and Pondrak with his two Akshauni army and Kashi Raja with three Akshauni army, they were ready to face Krishna. First time Krishna came face to face to Pondrak, Krishna again had a laugh. Wow, joker. He saw he's wearing like me yellow dhoti and four hands. And all duplicate Shang Chakra Gadha Padma and imitation Kaustub Mani and Vajanti Mala and Garuda flag on his chariot. Krishna had a laugh. And after laughing, Krishna was angry. And he chastised Pondra. He said, Today I will give you a dog's death. And immediately Pondrak's army attacked Krishna with so many arrows and tridents and swords and clubs and spears and so many other weapons were thrown at Krishna. And Krishna is so fast with his arrows, he broke all the weapons in the air. And with his Sudarshan Chakra, he killed all the army of Pondrak and Kashiraj. Within no minute, 
within few minutes, no time. Initially there were many, many humans on the battlefield. Now there were many, many crows, eagles, vultures and dogs on the battlefield eating the corpses of humans. He killed everybody. All the soldiers he killed, all those followers he killed. Somebody's legs were broken, somebody's hand was broken, somebody's neck was cut. And elephants and horses were killed. And there was a river of blood. And all the smashed pieces of chariots and crowns was floating in that. And that is Krishna. And that is Krishna's army. Nobody can stand in front of him. And then Krishna came face to face to Poundrak. And he told, I am giving my Sudarshan Chakra to you. And with his arrows, he killed his horses, his chariot driver, broke his chariot and flags. And finally, with his Sudarshan Chakra, he killed Poundrak. Poundrak was always thinking of Krishna's roop, Krishna's form, four-handed Vishnu form. So because of that thinking, he was getting purified and he got Sarupya Mukti. See, becoming an enemy of Krishna is also beneficial. What to speak about becoming a friend of Krishna, becoming a servant of Krishna. So Lord Sri Krishna has appeared as Sri Sri Radha Ras Bihari right here in our city. So we are very fortunate to come here and become friend of Krishna, become servant of Krishna. So we should not miss this opportunity. Please come every day and take darshan and participate in Aarti and Kirtan and class and festivals and devotional service. And in that way, we become closer to Krishna, we become Krishna conscious. That's the benefit of Iskon. that's the benefit of Sri Prabhupada's movement. That just by coming and participating in temple activities, we become Krishna conscious. Not much has to be done, just be present and chant the holy name and hear Katha. Such a simple and sublime process. So Pounder got Sarupya Mukti. Kashi Raja got very angry. And he attacked Krishna. And Krishna released an arrow, so swift arrow, that it cut the head of Kashi Raj and took it straight inside the city of Kashi, Varanasi, and it fell at the gate of his palace. Now, why did Krishna do that? So, when Kashi Raja was getting ready for the battle, he told his queens in the palace that today I will go and kill our enemy Krishna, cut his head, and personally bring it and show to all of you right here in the palace. I'll throw his head in the city. And the queens were very happy to hear the heroic uh, announcement. And they gathered all their maid servants and told them, Today uh, our king is going to kill Krishna and bring his head here. And the maid servants told their husbands and children and gradually it spread to all the masses. And all the masses were eager to see the head of the enemy. And suddenly one head dropped from the sky. Like some big wind comes and blows the flower here and there, the arrow was making the head go around here and there and it fell. When it fell, everybody got surprised. Somebody thought, some flower has come from the sky. My flower, my flower, they were saying. Then they saw there are hairs and earrings. Then they saw this is not flower, this is head. And they got happy. Wow, the enemy's head is here. They all gathered, the queens gathered to see the enemy's head. And when they saw closely, it was their husband's head, Kashi Raja's head. They all started crying. This is Krishna. 
Anybody who thinks to become enemy of Krishna, he will be defeated. Nobody can stand in competition to Krishna. We can stand as servant of Krishna, then we will be successful. But we should not compete with Krishna. We should not try to become Krishna. We should not try to become hero in somebody else's life. So even when we preach, we should not preach so that we occupy the place and position of Krishna in somebody else's life. We should preach so that devotees depend on Krishna, not depend on preacher, on us. We should tell them, if you have a problem, go to Radha Rasbihari and pray, he will solve it. Not, if you have a problem, call me, I will take care. No, International Society for? Not Prabhuji Consciousness. We should not become Krishna in somebody's life. That manmana bhava mad bhakto madhyaji maam namaskuru, think of me. Problem, call me, WhatsApp me, want to go to bathroom, ask me. No. We should not take Krishna's position in another's life. That is not preaching, that is weakness. That is making them disempowered. Preaching doesn't mean you become a dumping ground for others' problem. They come, tell the problem, go away and sleep and you have a sleepless night. Bicharega kya hoga? No, that is not preaching. Preaching is empowering them that you have a problem, go to Krishna and pray to Him and He will sort it out. To increase their faith and dependence on Krishna. The eventual goal, okay, in initial phases somebody may require a lending hand. That's okay. But finally international society for Krishna consciousness. They should increase their dependence on Krishna. That's preaching. Not becoming hero in somebody's life. Not taking credit of solution of some problems in somebody's life. That happened because of me. No, Krishna is hero in everybody's life. A conditioned soul is not capable to solve others' problem. A conditioned soul requires free soul a liberated soul to make him liberated and that's Krishna and a pure devotee spiritual master not another conditioned soul a blind man tells another blind man I am senior blind man I will help you to cross the road no both will fall it requires a eye a man with eyes to help a blind man to cross the road so we cannot compete, we should not compete with Krishna. Not try to become Krishna in somebody's life. But we are servants of Krishna, helping other servants, serving other servants, connecting them to Krishna. So Krishna killed Kashiraj and he went with his army back to Dwaraka. Kashiraj had a son, Sudakshina. And he performed the funeral rites of his father. And now he wanted revenge. He wanted to kill Krishna. And he wanted to kill all Dwarkavasis. So he started worshipping Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is in Kashi, Vishwanath, local call. So he thought it's easy, intercom pe kaam ho jayega. So he started chanting Lord Shiva's name and performing penance. And Lord Shiva mercifully appeared to him, Ashitosh. And he said, what do you want? He said, I want to kill my enemy, Krishna. And all of Dwarka Vasis. Lord Shiva said, Ek aur a gaya. one more has come. Since years this is happening, Lord Shiva loves Krishna. And his followers want to kill Krishna. See? What a difficult, challenging situation. 
you love your boss and master and you love your follower who wants to kill your master your worshiper so lord shiva told look to kill your enemy i can tell you the process you do tantric yagya black magic yagya gather some priest and chant the mantras through that is called abhichar ritual and if the mantras are chanted properly and the offerings are made properly then on the southern side the fire will come out as my associate dakshin agni and that associate can fulfill your desire to kill any enemy you want but conditions apply the condition is that enemy should not be against the should not be favored by the brahmanas the enemy should be against the brahmanas if the enemy is favored by the brahmanas then dakshin agni cannot do anything so sudakshina did some research and found out every day brahmanas come and pay obeisances to dwarkadesh krishna and he concluded definitely he is not favored by the brahmanas he is making them offer obeisances to him he must be torturing them that's why they are offering obeisances see this is called misinterpretation when you already have a motivation in heart you can misinterpret any fact so that it supports your motivation that's called rationality rationalizing our mind to our ambitions that's a big flaw of the mind so he went underground in the basement and did a black magic yagya tantric yagya with all the priest and when the final ahuti was given a big dakshin agni the expansion of lord shiva demonic form came out the height was till the sky full black body only mustache beard and hair were red with a trident in his hand and red eyes and sparks of fire were coming out of the eyes full naked any person sees him today will get a heart attack so dangerous touching the clouds as if he would eat up the whole creation with big sharp tongue and sharp teeth very very ferocious fearful form and sudakshin ordered him go to dwarka and kill krishna and all the dwarka vasis and that dakshin agni started running towards dwarka with millions and millions of ghostly followers of lord shiva so many followers of lord shiva got burnt by dakshin agni he was so ferocious and powerful so much cinders of fire were coming from his eyes and as he was running his head was above the clouds which is 30 40000 feet and there was earthquake happening wherever he was placing his feet and it's imagine a big mountain of fire with high speed going towards a city with so many ghostly beings it was a very dangerous situation so all the bordering villages of dwarka they saw a big army of fire is coming towards them with a big mountain of fire they got afraid and they ran to the palace of dwarkadish said krishna krishna please help us please protect us pai mam raksha mam Krishna said, "What happened?" He said, "A big army of fire is coming to devastate Dwarka, to burn all of us. Please protect us." Now Krishna is bhakta vatsalya. He loves and protects his devotees always. There are so many pastimes in Bhagavatam in the history that devotees have trouble, and Krishna has protected Gajendra and Prahlad Maharaj and Sita Mata and Draupadi. and uttara mata and parikshit maharaj and pandavas and there is not a single story where the devotee is in problem and krishna is not protected there is not a single story so krishna always protect his devotees even today so all the dwarka vasis 
they were in fear and they told krishna but krishna didn't got up today he didn't get up to do anything why because krishna was playing chess chopad and he didn't wanted to end the game in between but he has to protect also but krishna thought for such a small problem why should i go sudarshan chakra was standing with folded hands he told sudarshan chakra do the need pull sudarshan chakra got very happy because every time krishna gives a target and he has to go and kill the target and come back today no target blank check do the need pull more freedom he was very happy sudarshan chakra went towards the army and the army with fire the mountain of fire dakshin agni was coming towards dwarka sudarshan chakra went face to face and sudarshan chakra increased its heat as sudarshan chakra increased its heat like thousands of suns the dakshin agni started feeling the heat fire started feeling the heat so much so that it turned back and started running away from sudarshan chakra that is sudarshan chakra like millions of suns and then sudarshan chakra started chasing dakshin agni and it reached kashi varanasi all the ghostly beings were destroyed by the heat of sudarshan chakra now dakshin agni the very ritual is such that it has to kill somebody it is a weapon it is a tool has to perform the function and if it cannot kill the target it has to kill the origin that is the law so because it cannot kill krishna and dwarka vasis it went and killed sudakshina and all the priest and went away so the enemy were finished problem was solved sudarshan chakra had no more job to be done he could have come back to dwarka but he had a blank check he went and destroyed the whole city of kashi all the palaces all the pathways all the uh, assembly halls every single item present there was destroyed why because this is the city where a conspiracy was done against my master destroyed the whole city then sudarshan chakra came back dwarkadish was happy so this is the consequence of pandra who claimed to be god false god this is the consequence of the followers of pandra who propagate him as god false god this is the consequence of kashiraj who was friend of such a false god and this is consequence of sudakshina who went against real god krishna that's all adharma so for us to practice dharma we should follow dharma to preach we should follow this principle that a krishna is the supreme personality of godhead and b there is nobody else who is supreme personality of godhead so this janmashtami we are very fortunate to be in iskon juhu where we'll have lakhs of people coming to take darshan of radha raj bihari they are all friends of krishna we should welcome them and have a good polite behavior with them safe behavior with them help them to go around take a book take prasadam take darshan answer their questions give them krishna consciousness make them chant one round make them life member whatever give them krishna and cultivate them so that they become devotees of krishna and that will please radha raj bihari when we increase the number of devotees our mission is janma sarthak kari kara parokar 
we perfect our life by practicing devotional service and para upkar we tell others to practice devotional service that's real compassion that's real suhard well wisher of the society so when we do that krishna is pleased with us and he happily takes birth in our heart and when he takes birth in our heart we are janmashmi inside our heart we have krishna's appearance in our heart so prabhupa said is con uh, is a organization in whose womb krishna has taken birth krishna came uh, in the womb of devaki krishna came in the prison of kans krishna has come in iskon and we have an opportunity for krishna to come in our hearts by following sadhana bhakti by following the rules and regulatory principles of bhakti so we should follow that okay we end here thank you very much shrimad bhagavatam ki jai shila prabhupad ki jai shri krishna janmashtami ki jai hare krishna if there are any questions or comments you may please ask hare krishna prabhu hare krishna thank you very much prabhu especially you brought this point of uh, associating with the equals seniors and juniors many times when a newcomer comes to iskon or vaishnava community he sees senior acting as a equal equal sometimes acts as a senior senior very compassionately sometimes acts as junior so you said uh, uh, st- staying for a long term is not a just a parameter to decide senior junior equal uh, what is exactly in a vaishnava community we should see as a parameter to see who is senior who is equal who is junior well in fact i said staying long term is called seniority he is called seniority but that's not the goal of life so somebody who is higher than us in age is senior somebody who has taken initiation before us even if my age is higher still that person is senior somebody who is uh, in a senior post even if my age and initiation is before that person still is senior and somebody in sanyas ashram even if i am a manager and he is not still he is senior so a person is senior by age by initiation by managerial position and by ashram so we should know our seniors and we should offer that respect so your question stands corrected because that is true somebody who is in more years is senior and should be offered respect as senior so elderly vaishnava should be offered respect as a senior okay uh, equals and juniors equals means equal age or equally together came to krishna consciousness or equal managerially or equal ashram friendly and juniors is less age opposite to senior less age came later to krishna consciousness less managerial position or less ashram of course i, I can i understand that we should never see some anyone as a junior because we ourselves consider as juniors in vaishnava community but uh, my another question is sometimes seniors very compassionately they deal with their juniors as equivalents so out of respect we deal with them so carefully but at the same time he is allowed to be uh, with us as equal 
So how to see that? So that's fine. That's their choice. But we don't cross boundaries. So if your senior comes and puts hands on your shoulder, he said, How are you, Janudev Prabhu? Next day you don't come and put hand on senior and say, How are you, Prabhu? No, we, we keep our boundaries. We offer obeisances. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Yes. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, my comment is, One time Girida Swami Pravachan gave the Bhagavatam, and he told us that the senior senior bhakta is to be able to do it. If we don't do it, then God will not be able to do it in front of us. Whatever the senior is, is to be able to do it in front of us. ये शिष्टाचार है इसका पालन करना जो जानते हैं उसका आवश्यक है जो नहीं जानते हैं वो अलग बात है सही हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण आपके कमेंट हम रिस्पेक्टफुली सुनते हैं हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण धन्यवाद प्रोजी बहुत सुंदर क्लास प्रोजी मेरा प्रश्न ये है कि जब भगवान द्वारका में रहते हैं तो संख्या चक्र गदापद्म ये धारण करते हैं तो हम ये देखते हैं कि ब्रह्मावन में भगवान बासुरी धारण करते हैं और मौर का पिंस धारण करते हैं और त्रिभंग में रहते हैं तो इनमें से कौन सा कौन सा चीज द्वारका में भी उनके पास रहता है जो ये तीन चीज हम � और बासुरी रहता है और मोर का पिंच धारण करते तो ये तीनों चीज में से वो वो चीज भी द्वारका में रहता है या नहीं रहता है उसके बारे में थोड़ा बताएंगे तो अच्छा तो द्वारका में भी मोर पंख है फ्लूट है त्रिभंग है लेकिन वो डिस्प्ले नहीं करते हैं मोर पंख तो रहता है फ्लूट और डिस्प्ले नहीं करते उधर बजाते नहीं ज़्यादा वो ब्रजवासियों के लिए गायों के लिए गोपियों के लिए यमुना नदी के लिए गोप पालकों के लिए ब्रजवासियों के लिए द्वारका के भक्तों का मूड ऐश्वर्य भाव का है तो वो वैसे अपने आप को प्रदर्शित करते हैं ठीक है धन्यवाद प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी बलदेव चंद्र प्रभु धन्यवाद आपने बहुत सुंदर बताया कृष्ण बुक्स में जाते समझाते प्रभुपाद अब उस तरह से बताया मेरा प्रश्न ये है कि जो आपने बताया ब्रह्मचारी में ब्रह्मचार्य आश्रम जो भक्त था जो कि दूसरे मंदिर में शिफ्ट हो गया उसको सुधर वक्त वो बोलते थे उसका नाम बता सकते हैं क्या? उनसे पूछ के बताता हूँ मैं। Confidentially इट ब्रेक नहीं करना चाहिए बिना कुछ। Any more questions? हाँ जी Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for uh, bringing out many learnings from this such wonderful pastime. I just wanted to know, you told uh, about uh, Pontak that he got the Sarupi Mukti. So, what about Kasira's? Uh, Any Asura killed by Krishna gets, gets liberation. So, which liberation he got is not mentioned or I have not read. Pontak is mentioned, Sarupi Mukti he got. Kasira also must, uh, must be in Vaikuntha. He gets liberated. All who those killed by Krishna, all the soldiers who are killed by Krishna, they get liberated. So one of the muktis they get. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Second thing you are saying that uh, uh, Kasira's son thought that these priests are not favored by the Lord Krishna, so that he chose them to do the yajna and tantric yajna. Come this, again, this priest. This priest. He just, he just misconceptually thought that these are not favored by Lord Krishna because they are coming and offering obeisances to Lord Krishna. Brahmanas. Mm. So, is he choose that same Brahmanas to no, do no, the yoga? No, no, no. They were tantric Brahmana, tantric priest. He just thought that Krishna's personality is such that he is not favored by the Brahmanas. That's why they are out of fear offering him obeisances. Krishna doesn't like Brahmanas. So, he can be used as a target for the tool of Dakshinagri. 
The priests were separate. They were not those Dwarka Brahmanas. Thank okay. you. Yeah. I, I can't hear. Uh, in South India, we hear Shiva's another form is Dakshina Murti. So, is it same Dakshina Agni is the Dakshina Murti? No, I don't know. Did Dakshina Murti go to Dwarka to kill Krishna? No. I don't know. I also don't know. I only know Dakshina Agni went. If he also went, then same. I don't There's know. There's only way to relate. Thank you, Prof. Okay, we end here. Thank you very much. Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. His Grace Gokulesha Prabhu Ki Jai. Jai.